Hello and welcome back to the French Watch Collector. Today on the bench, we have my first uh, Psycho, a 6138, uh, the Kakume version, which is this beautiful blue dial and orange hand. I'm just checking the watch to see if it's uh, working. So now the quick side date, you can see it's moving with the day and the date function. So that's good. The, the, the time as well is changing. But you see, when I want to start the chronograph, there is something wrong. He doesn't want to start. The pusher is doesn't come back. It looks like it's all the way down. So when I put the watch on a time grapher, you can see the amplitude is quite low at uh, 180 degrees. A uh, lot of uh, the, the bit rate is uh, high as well with 50 second uh, gain per day. And the bit error is very high for, for, for a watch. I like it to be uh, below one. So let's see if I can uh, repair this watch because you see the the chronograph function was not working, so let's see what's, uh, what's wrong with this watch. Okay, so first let's look at the movement. So like I said, it's a 6138 movement, so automatic chronograph. So let's remove the oscillating weight from the, from the automatic device. So this is a heavy, heavy part. It's very difficult to grab compared to the other parts that you have in a watch movement, which are generally very uh, very light. Okay, I'm removing the winding stem. Everything looks good on the winding stem, no rust. We can see the movement is beating there, so I don't know if there is something, anything wrong with movement. But you see now I'm removing the pushers and there is something wrong. There is no spring in the pushers. Normally there is some springs that the pusher uh, go back to their original position. So that might be the issues, but anyway, we are going to fully disassemble the movement uh, to service it, because you can, we can see on the time grapher that uh, the, the, our, uh, the, the bit error was quite high uh, and it was gaining quite a lot of seconds per day, so we need a good maintenance. I'm removing the hand. You can see on the hand it was missing some loom as well, you see on the minute hand. So I will fix that later. I will show you in a video a bit later on. So I remove the, the, the hand, all the hand in the center. So the minute, the hour, and the second hand from the chronograph. That's the minute hand from the chronograph, and that's the hour hand from the chronograph. So I always use a piece of plastic on the top because I don't want to damage the dial. You can see the dial is in a very good state. I really like this deep blue dial. Uh, with uh, some black and some blue, yeah, depending on the on the light shine on the dial. So let's let's remove the dial, and the same same way as we did with the hand, we want to put it in this uh, little box there. We will store it and keep it safe, like because we don't want anything to happen to this dial, any scratches or anything bad. If there is any uh, psycho fan out there. Because I'm not uh, I'm not a professional, so I don't know everything about Psycho. I think this is an original dial, but if you think it's uh, an aftermarket dial, just put down uh, some comment below. But I think this uh, this watch is pretty uh, pretty genuine. I think there is a lot of uh, second-hand parts for this watch, so it's a possibility that sometimes the hand or the dial is not the original one. But I think on this model, it looks pretty original to me. But if you see anything uh, or if you know anything, please put down in the comments. It would be uh, very nice uh, to know and share your, your knowledge on, uh, on, the, on the Psycho watches. Okay, so now that the dial is removed, we can focus on removing the day uh, ring and the calendar ring. First, I need to remove these parts which are holding, which are holding the, the center disc in, in place. Okay, remove it with a pair of carbon tweezers. Put it away in this box as well. That's where I'm going to store all the delicate parts. And now I can focus on disassembling, starting disassembling the watch. First, by removing this calendar plate on the top. So this is like I, my first uh, watch from Psycho, probably not the, the simplest watch from Psycho because it's automatic chronograph from the 70s. So chronograph is always a bit more complicated because there is a lot of parts. 
but it's quite a, an historical movement. It's not the, like the 6139, which is one of the first automatic movements. This one is the one just after, but it's from the early 70s. Uh, so this is quite a, a vintage movement and a very famous one. So you see now I store all the parts away in this little box that we keep them in place safely. And now I can focus on the, on the movement. Okay, starting by disassembling the calendar mechanism. And you can see on his watch compared to other Swiss, Swiss watch, it's a bit shocking first, but there is some plastic parts. Like these two parts were made of plastic. Yeah. Uh, but I guess it's, it's working. And we don't, like the engineer probably decided that they didn't need to have some metal parts or to have the strength of metal and plastic was more than enough. So a bit of cost saving there. And this as well, you remember in my other video, I will put a link in a corner uh, from the Omega when I disassemble a chronograph, automatic chronograph from Omega. I put back the screws in place uh, because on the chronograph movement, there is a lot of screws and there are tiny differences between each screws. So I just want to make sure that they go back to the, to the correct place. So for that, I put them back on the movement and I will clean the movement with the screws on. And when I will reassemble it, I will remove the, move, the screws at the last minute. So to be sure they go to the right place. Okay, so now I'm removing this, this big plate. And basically what we find underneath, it's a keyless work and uh, our mechanism for the chronograph. So now I'm removing the cannon pinion with a presto tool. Again, you can see these small wheels, it's like a plastic, uh, plastic component. The minute wheel, which is a pretty standard. And now that I remove the main parts, I will focus on the other side where you have the main component from the, from the chronograph. But first, we need to disassemble the automatic mechanism. So we remove already the oscillating weight. And now we are going to remove this plate, which is on the top, covering all the parts from the automatic mechanism. So the, you can see on the bench there, there is like these arms, like a kind of a claw if you want, which is called sometimes a magic lever from, uh, from Psycho, which is a way they use to wind the watch when the rotor is turning both ways. Okay, so now I remove all the parts from the automatic uh, device. And uh, now I will start to disassemble the, the mechanism, the main mechanism, if you want, of the of the movement. So first, I will remove this uh, plate on top, which is holding the chronograph movement, which is kept in place with three screws. So again, I try to keep all the parts, like you see, together. Like I, I do some like small families, if you want, that will help me, like when I reassemble the parts, to keep them together to know where they go on the movement. Obviously, I have my videos because a lot of people ask me, oh, how do I know where the parts are going back or they're going back? So, like I said, I keep them like in families and as, as well, the videos that I put on YouTube, I use it as well during my, my uh, reassembly. Uh, I use my disassembly video if I have any uh, like parts where I don't know which way they go, but I will go back to my video and see and see the way it was during, before the disassembly. You can see that there was a, a bit of a, a jumping spring that uh, did not go far away, uh, but yeah, it, it flew a bit. Okay, so I remove like already the spring, uh, so I remove the tension if you want in the chronograph mechanism, and now I'm removing all the parts, like the, the, coupling, like the, the coupling arm from the chronograph, and you see I put back the screws the one where I'm not sure uh, if I will find where they go, just to be sure, I put them back on a mechanism because we don't want to, to mix them. So that's another way to remember where the parts are going. It's a, it's a safer way. 
Okay, you see that's a column wheel, so that's a chronograph with a column wheel mechanism. Different than, uh, than the Omega, which was a, a cam operated uh, chronograph. Okay, so now I'm disassembling the ratchet wheel, which is like standard, like which is on all mechanism. This is a click, the click spring which is a bit uh, different than uh, what you can find on on Swiss uh, watch if you want. It's a, a different design. It's more like a yeah, chronograph is always different than other, uh, than other design if you want. Most of the time for the, for the ratchet wheel. And here I'm going to remove the balance assembly, which is kept in place with a bridge. You see, like you have two screws on each side, which is a bit different as well compared to what you can find on uh, on my other video on other movement. Just checking the air spring is, is good, it's looking good. And now I can remove as well the pallet bridge, which is holding in place the pallet fork. Oh, just jump. And there is a wheel you see that came uh, fall from the other side that was not attached as a how wheel actually that fall from the underneath. So I should have removed that uh, when I was on the on the dial side before I start the the balance wheel side. Okay, so now that I remove the balance wheel, I will remove this big plate, which is holding basically the and the rest of the mechanism, which is the train of wheel, the the barrel the barrel arbor, and underneath, which is this big center wheel, which is a chronograph wheel. That's a chronograph wheel. And you can see the part there, that's the part the train of wheel with the escape wheel. So this is quite standard now, it's like a like on uh, on uh, other watches, obviously, you need a train of wheel to transmit the power from the main spring to your uh, to your pallet fork and to your balance assembly. Okay, so now I remove the center wheel, and now let's jump back to the other side, where first I will remove the spring to release the tension in the mechanism. So this is. Uh, the hour side if you want, so you will have all the mechanism for the hour side and these are all the mechanism for the pushers of your of your chronograph so the starter and the reset so the parts are coming quite easy, so when you remove the tension, when you remove the spring you can see there there is a little spring as well so you need to be careful so this is all the mechanism for the, for the hour wheel so the hours from the chronograph mechanism. Remove this part with a bit of Rodico because I could not grab it with my tweezers, so I didn't want to damage the part. It's safer to do it this way with a bit of Rodico. Okay, and so now I will focus, so that's a mechanism that will be used for the quick set date. So to change the day and the, the, the date for the for the calendar mechanism. So this is quite a complicated watch when you think about it because there is obviously the, the, the timekeeping element of the watch, which is like on all watches, because the watch uh, the, the first function is uh, for timekeeping. You have a chronograph, which is already a quite complicated uh, mechanism to add. It's an automated watch and on top of it you have a calendar function with the day and the date, um, and a, a quick set date as well function. So that's quite a, a complicated watch uh, compared to a just a standard timekeeping watch. And that's what I like is making it interesting as well. Like I said, I'm doing this. It's my uh, it's, a, it's an hobby for me. I like mechanism. I like mechanical uh, system. And when you work on this with like a lot of parts which are doing different things. Uh, yeah, that's what make it uh, make it interesting. And the more you progress, uh, you want extra challenges. So that's why I like to work on this movement as well. So this is the first time I work 
on a psycho movement. So if you see anything wrong or if you have any comments or anything, please put it down below. It's always uh, nice to, to share the knowledge. Uh, like I try to share my knowledge, which is very limited because I'm not, uh, I'm not a professional. I'm, uh, I do this as a hobby, like I said. And uh, yeah, if you have any question as well, please put, uh, put it down below in a comment and I will, uh, I will try to answer it. Okay, so you remember at the beginning, like the, the chronograph was not working. I could not see anything obvious during the disassembly of the movement. Obviously, we saw that it was missing the spring in the pushers. That's very strange because it means that somebody disassembled the watch and uh, when he put it back, did not put the spring. Uh, that's a, a huge mistake. But in the movement, I could not see anything wrong. I did not see like broken parts or uh, any place uh, in a part. So yeah. So before I put the parts uh, in a cleaning machine, I will put the balance assembly back on the movement. Uh, that's the safest way to put it, uh, to clean it. Uh, for sure, it will stay attached to the, to the main plate and it will, it will not get damaged during cleaning. So you can see there is a, a bit of a, a different design with this, uh, the, the wheel is in the center of the bridge. Compared to other movement that I had, I did the wheel is at the extremity of uh, of the bridge or cock because it's not uh, held in two place. Okay, so now I put back the the screws. Perfect. Just checking, like yeah, you can see it's uh, it's moving. Okay, so now let's open the the balance assembly, uh, the main spring. Sorry. So I just opened the lid on the top by pressing down and uh, now you can see there is a long extended pivot with a, a wheel uh, like uh, on top of this lid. So I just want to make sure I don't damage anything. Just I go very gently with a pair of tweezers. Not to use too much force. You, you never want to use too much force uh, when you work on a watch. And I will try to go underneath and just lift it very slowly. Perfect. Nice. It's coming nicely. Okay. That's a, that's a bit different compared to other other watches. Okay. Just checking if uh, if everything looks good. Perfect. And now we can see we are going to remove the barrel arbor, which is in the middle, which is coming very easily. And I'm going to remove the main spring. That's the part that's keeping all the power when you wind the watch. If you wind it manually or, or automatically, you can see it's quite dirty in it because there is a special grease that you need to put in automatic uh, system that we put back when we do the reassembly and it's quite a dark grease. Okay, so now the spring is out and it's, it's in good shape. It's, uh, the shape of the spring is quite good. So here we go. So now I clean all the parts that I went into the cleaning machine. I clean the, the spring as well that I'm putting back right now. And to start, I'm going to assemble the main spring barrel. So first I need to, to wind the main spring in the barrel. So for that, I will use a special tool, which is a, a set of main spring winders. So basically I will put the main spring into this winder and I will wind it. So by turning it, the correct way and I will wind the spring around the post so you can see at the end there there is this it's in two two there is two parts so it's a bit a bit a bit trickier if you want to to put it back in the main spring winder so you need to make sure it's aligned so I will use a pair of tweezers on my hand just to, to put it at the, at the entrance of the main spring winders and wind it at the same time. So that's a bit, uh, a bit of uh, fiddly operation to do, but uh, yeah, I managed to, to do it. There we go. So now you can see both parts are winding inside the main spring winders. Perfect. So now I unwind a bit to release the tension in the main spring. 
And when the tension is removed, I will remove the, the lid there. So you need to be really careful there. You want to go very slowly because if you go too fast, the, the spring can jump as well from the from the from the winder. So I will use a pair of tweezers to go underneath and just gently lift the lid while keeping the main spring inside the inside the winder. Okay, just go very gently there. So you see I'm holding the spring with the with the tweezers and pushing the the lid with my fingers. And there we go is out. Okay, so now let's focus on uh, on the barrel. Gonna put off uh, some grease at the bottom, some uh, A200 just to make sure that the spring is nicely lubricated and not too, not too much friction. And this is a grease I was talking about. So this is a, a, graphite, a graphite grease uh, that you use for automatic uh, main springs that you put on the wall there. So I will put it uh, on three different spots on the wall. And when it's done, I can push the main spring that was wine inside the main spring barrel. Perfect, so now it's in place, it's clean, it's oiled, it's greased. Put a bit of uh, oil there in the hole where the, the barrel arbor is going to come to make sure it's nicely lubricated. So put some 9104 there. I insert the main spring, uh, the barrel arbor, sorry, in the main spring. And now, put a bit of 9104 same as I did on the bottom with it on the top. And I put back the lid. Okay. And this I will push it down with the tweezers because I cannot use a closing tool because there is these wheels that get in the way. Okay, so now the next step will be to oil the jewels on the, on the balance assembly. So you can see there's a the spring on the balance on, on these jewels is a bit different compared to to other spring. So you need to turn them. They are like kind of a, a clover shape if you want. You need to turn them and they go out one side per one side. And you can take the spring out. And now I took the jewels with a bit of, uh, of Rodico. So I will uh, clean them. with. Uh, they already got clean obviously in a, in a washing machine with the movement. But I will clean them with a bit of Rodico. And uh, I will do a surface treatment on, uh, on the jewels to make sure that uh, the oil will stay uh, in the right place. So that I put them in a, in a special product for like 10 seconds. Take them out. I will take them out of the and put it on a special paper that will absorb any residue and I will dry them. I will dry each part and when they are dry after I will put some oil, some, some 9010 right in the middle of the jewels, that's very important. Put it right in the middle and I will just put this little cap on top of it. Perfect. And now it's uh, fully clean, treated and oiled. I can put it back into the balance assembly. Perfect. Go right in the middle. You can see it's moving. So it's in the right position. And I will install back this little spring, which is a bit more fiddly than, uh, than the spring that you can find uh, on Swiss movement on most of the Swiss movement, if you want, that I work on so far on my other video. But it's not too bad, to be fair. It's to take a bit of practice. Just need to be a bit careful. But yeah, you can see I'm turning it slowly and putting one side per one side, engaging into a groove. Perfect. And I will do exactly the same operation on the other side. 
So taking the spring out, prefer to use a bit of Rodico there to grab it because yeah, it's very small, ink can jump. And do the same process, take the jewel, clean it, treat it, and the last point would be to oil the jewel with a bit of uh, 9010 and install it back into the into the mechanism. I like to do this uh, straight after the cleaning so like that my balance assembly and my jewels are ready. So when when I put back the balance assembly it will be one of the last step for the mechanism. So I want everything to be oiled and to be ready to check that uh, everything is working so that's why I like to do it uh, at the beginning of the reassembly process. Okay, so now I'm putting back the, the spring in place. Perfect. And now let's move on to the to reassembling the rest of the mechanism. So first we are going to start on the keyless work. So we put a bit of uh, grease on the, on the winding pinion and a winding stem, and I will install I will install them. So first I put the winding pinion on the winding stem. It's a bit of a tricky operation there to do it first because you can see there is nothing holding the pinion underneath. So you need to hold it with a tweezer while putting the winding stem. It's a bit tricky, and I put the clutch, same, and I align everything into the mechanism. Perfect. Put a bit of uh, grease there or in the middle of the clutch where the yoke is going to come later. So this part of the mechanism is to, when we pull on a, on a stem or on a crown, is what will activate a different mode if you want. So it will be from uh, like the normal mode, the first mode, which is winding on most of the watch. You will, you will be able to wind on your watch. On this one, the second mode will be the uh, quick set date. And you have a third mode. If you pull, you have a third position. Uh, it will be for the changing the time. Okay. So now I'm, I'm oiling and assembling. Now putting a bit of oil on all the parts where the parts are going to come. So this is the post where the yoke is going to come. So I need to put a bit of 9104 first. And now I'm putting the yoke in place. So the yoke will go right in the middle of the clutch where I put some grease before. Perfect. It's in position. Okay, so the next uh, parts uh, need to put some uh, some uh, oil first. So for the oil and uh, assembly and disassembly, actually, I uh, use some service manual. So for the cycle, like if you work on a six one three eight or six one three nine, which is uh, which has some similarities, you can find online uh, a lot of documentation, like with a service manual. So it tell you all you need to disassemble the watch or you need to reassemble the watch, or you need to oil the watch, and as well, all the checks that you need to do, and all the setup, like because in a chronograph, uh, there is some parts that can be adjusted if you want to have the chronograph that uh, run uh, correctly. So obviously, in this service manual, you have, you have all the explanation on how to do these things. So that's a very important uh, document to find, especially if you work on um, complicated watch like uh, like this one um, so yeah I always try to find a, a service manual on a watch sometimes when you have uh, like uh, very old watches obviously there is nothing so you need to use like uh, best practices but as soon as you can find one you you need to you need to to look at it and uh, and follow it so you can see there, I, I, I disassemble uh, the spring because I, and because I put, I found out that I put the yoke the wrong way around. Uh, so yeah, I will, uh, I put back the correct way. We move the grease, uh, the excess grease 
uh, that was on this side. Um, and now I can put back the, the yolk spring uh, because yeah, I could see, you see, there was something strange. So I just went back to the video or to the service manual and uh, I saw that the yolk was uh, the wrong way around. Um, so yeah, as soon as you, you notice something, something strange, just yeah, stop a minute and just look, uh, analyze and uh, yeah, see if there is uh, nothing wrong with uh, what you what you have done. Yeah, because obviously I could have found out that the uh, yoke was the wrong way around much later during the disassembly. But sometimes you need to disassemble a lot of parts uh, to change the position or change something. So if you find out, uh, the sooner the better. Yeah. Okay. So now I put. Uh, the setting lever uh, spring and the screws. Now I'm arming, you see that's, that's a spring, so I'm arming the setting lever. And oh, you could see this uh, part that's just jump. So now a bit of a tricky operation. I'm holding with one tweezer the spring, releasing the spring on a, on a part. Perfect. That's in position. So yes, uh, it's, like I said, this, these movements are a bit more complicated, so sometimes you need to use some uh, some techniques to hold one part with one hand, with a pair of tweezers, put another one. Um, so yeah, and you can see there I'm checking like the three position and everything is looking uh, good. So remove the spring that I put. You remember when I did a disassembly, I put some of the spring back on the mechanism just to make sure I don't mix them. So now I remove it. Just to put this plate that uh, is used for the quick side date mechanism. Like that, you see, for sure I know that this spring, this screw, sorry, it's, uh, it's at the right place. Okay, so now let's go back to the other side. So we did the keyless work. And uh, what we are going to do now, we are going to install the center wheel. So first I'm going to oil the center wheel. Same, like I said before, I will follow the instruction manual. So it tells you to, when you, have done the, when you have done the keyless work, to go back on the other side to install the center wheel. Tell you where to put the oil and which oil as well you need to put. Because like I said, in watchmaking, there is a, like different oils. Like you have like thick oils, thin oils, uh, you have grease, you have oils for your pallet fork, you have oil for your mainspring. You, you, you have different, uh, different oils, uh, which are used for, for, for different purposes. So just need to make sure you use the correct one and you follow for this. You follow the service manual if you have, uh, if you have one. Okay, so now I move back to the keyless work and I will install the cannon pinion. So it's friction mounted, so you need to use a bit of force with a pair of tweezers to push it in place. Put a bit of 9104 there. And I install the minute wheel. Perfect. And this is our wheel on the top. And I will oil these parts. So, like I said, this is a, a plastic uh, plastic pinion, which is uh, yeah quite unusual to find on the uh, on the movement for me because it's the first time I think I work on a movement with uh, plastic parts. But it's quite well known from Seiko or other brands uh, as well to use some plastic component. Okay, so this is uh, our wheel from the chronograph. You can see with uh, the arch shape cam. So I oil, oiled the, the hole and now I put it in place. Just oil the top as well. And now I will oil all the points where you will have the mechanism. So that's the mechanism that will stop. That's the arm that will come against the wheels to stop it when the, when the chronograph is not running or when you ask to stop the chronograph. So this is like some levers that will transmit the, the, the information from the pushers to uh, the wheel. That's a spring, which is a very strange uh, and a very original shape 
for uh, for a spring. You can see there I put it in place, and now I will try to keep the arm with a pair of uh, plastic uh, plastic stick and a tweezers, and you can see that up oh, it went into position. So you put a bit of tension on the arm. And now I will carry on by assembling the rest of the, like I say, the arms that transmit the power from the pushers to the chronograph mechanism. Okay, so this as well, if I'm not sure where, where it goes or how it goes, I look at the service manual. But sometimes in the service manual, like it's drawings, so you don't have everything. So I like to revert back to my videos of, of during the disassembly and there I know for sure where it goes. And you see like does it goes after the the post, like there is a post or before the post. Like if you are not sure, you look on the videos and you will know where where the parts are going. If you if you uh, do do this as a hobby for like me as well, you don't need to do videos, but you can take your phone and take pictures. At the different stage of the deer assembly and like that if you have an issue when you reassemble the parts you can go back to your pictures and uh, and look at them okay so now i put the parts and uh, the last bit will be this uh, spring that basically will keep the tension in the in a chronograph uh, mechanism there in the arms so you can see they go around some posts some posts so some they go under some they go above um, and there, by safety, you see I use, again, my uh, plastic stick to hold it in place and with the tweezers, I will bend it in place. So you need to use a bit of force there, that's why you want to keep it in place, because it can jump. Okay, perfect. It looks like it's in, uh, it's in place. Yeah, perfect. It's, uh, it's, it's looking good. So now I've done all the keyless work and our mechanism from the chronograph. So we are going to put this big plate on the top. And this is where later on we are going to put the calendar mechanism uh, on top of it. So you need to make sure everything is aligned underneath. You have the hour wheel, which have a extended uh, pivot if you want. So you need to be careful that you align it properly because you don't want to damage or bend the pivot. So when everything is aligned, you put the, the three screws. Okay, you can see there are jump quite a bit forward in the, in the assembly. The chronograph and the movement is uh, beating and fully assembled. I had a big technical issue with my camera and I lost the footage of the assembly of the chronograph. So I'm really sorry, but I will uh, put some other video on Psycho. I have another one. In, uh, in the making, so for sure you will be able to see on other videos uh, the assembly of this part of the movement. So again, I'm sorry, but you will see now I will, I will carry on with the movement and the most important is to see at the end what's the result uh, on, on the watch and see if, if I manage to, to make it work again. So okay, so now I, I jump back to the calendar mechanism. So I put these wheels, so you can see there, there is no uh, pivot in the center, so I'm not sure why, where to place the the wheel. Just checking again. Yeah, it's it's looking. Yeah, there we go. Now it's it's in a place actually. It's, there is a little uh, edge, but it's very very uh, thin. So that's looking good. And again, you can see this uh, for the calendar mechanism. Two parts, uh, two plastic parts. That's the parts which are driving the, the, the calendar rings. And uh, this is uh, the jumper from the calendar mechanism, which is nice. Because the jumper is, uh, and the spring are integrated in one part. So it makes it uh, quite easier to, to assemble. Perfect. Put a bit of oil there at the extremity of the jumper. And the first uh, parts that I will uh, reassemble will be the, the calendar wheel for from all the parts that I put, you remember, at the beginning in this little box. Okay, 
so I put it always use some carbon tweezers uh, or uh, I have some uh, wood tweezers as well just to make sure you don't damage the paint on the on the disc okay so now I, I put uh, the jumper you see the disc is in place I will put this uh, this plate in place that keeps the and the second one so we keep the date disc correctly in place Okay, put the screws. You can see the sparks there, or small they are, because obviously when uh, when you see on a video, you can see that everything is quite big, uh, because yeah, the zoom is quite uh, powerful. But when you see the parts on the bench compared to my fingers, and they are not the smallest parts, there is smaller parts than that. Uh, it just put everything a bit in uh, in perspective. Okay, so that's a calendar. Uh, that's a wheel. Sorry for the. For the for the day to do the quick side date on a, on a day uh, on a day uh, disc. Okay, and the next one will be like a, like the day disc to put in the center. Perfect, and you can see underneath, like in the plate I put, it was a, a spring, like a long arm. So that's a spring that come underneath the, the day discs. So that's for the jumping, you know, at the when you, when you are at midnight or close to midnight, everything will jump from one day to the other. So that's, I'm removing the spring underneath, you see, re, and pushing the plate with the carbon tweezer tip. There we go, perfect. Now it's laying down flat and the spring uh, is armed. Just doing a quick check on a quick side date. Yeah, so I turn one side, change the date. And now turn the other side, I'm changing the day. So looks like it's working uh, for the quick side date. So that's uh, good news. And the last part to keep everything in place will be this kind of uh, little ring. So if you like the video, yeah, it would be very nice to, to subscribe to my channel. Like I said, there will be many more uh, videos to come. So click on subscribe and uh, on the notification bell and you will receive notification when I post, post the new videos. Yeah. So thanks for your support. Okay, so the calendar mechanism is uh, it's looking good. And now I'm going to put this... Uh, this uh, disc around so that's uh, the dial dial disc that's the dial will come on this uh, on this uh, on this disc so for that i will put the mechanism on a on a cushion it will be easier to handle for me to put uh, oh you see everything everything slide because it was not uh, not in place it did not go very far Okay, so I put back the, the disc and now I will need to align the, the die fit screw, the die fit, sorry, into the holes. You can see the dial is, I really like this, uh, this dial. And here we go. Now it's pressed in place. I will secure it by uh, screwing the die fit screws. And I can check if yeah, the chronograph function is, is actuating, yeah. Obviously, we don't have the hand there, but yeah, I reset everything that you need to do before you install the, the end on the chronograph. Perfect. Okay, so you remember at the beginning as well, the, on the minute end, it was some uh, loom uh, missing in the middle. So first, I will remove the all the all loom in the center of the minute and uh, and hour hand. So for that, I use a pair of tweezers. Just scratch uh, the old loom in the middle. Just uh, remove it with a bit of rodico, and now uh, we make a new paste to to apply the loom. So first, I I use some uh, loom powder, a bit of uh, varnish if you want. And I just mix that together until you get. You need to get the right co consistency, so you don't want to have it too thin or too thick because otherwise it will not be applied 
uh, nicely on a watch. And when I, I have the right consistency, I just apply it on the hand. So you can see, just bit by bit, I just, there we go. And you want to have a smooth surface. And now we leave it dry, I will let it dry for uh, 12 hours. Okay, so let's focus on the case. Uh, the case is quite dirty. You can see that the, uh, the, um, the gasket was fully dried up. The scratch is, uh, the, sorry, the glass is quite scratched. And the case is, uh, like I said, quite dirty, but in good state. So I will not do any polishing on the, on the case because I want to keep it as original. But first I will remove the bezel, which is as well in good shape for the, for the age of the watch. And when the bezel is removed, I can remove the glass and uh, an o-ring inside that can keep that seal uh, the and uh, seal the glass. Yeah. There we go. So now what uh, I will with uh, a wooden t uh, wooden tip, I will remove all the all the dirt as much as I can before I can put all I will put all the parts in a ultrasonic machine to get a good clean. Uh, on on the parts, so on on the case and a case back. Clean inside the pusher there. And now I have the parts I came back from the ultrasonic machine. You can see, it's they are much cleaner than before, much shinier than before. There is still some scratches, but it's a vintage watch, so I don't I don't mind. It's not like deep scratches. So I will put a bit of uh, grease. On the on the ring before I put back a new glass, a new crystal. There we go now. So now just make sure it's sitting down uh, flat. So that's a new crystal that I bought. You can find them online. And now I just push back the push a crystal. You can push it by hand. There is no, it's not uh, friction mounted on this uh, on this case. And uh, but what's friction mounted is uh, the bezel. So for that, to put the bezel in place, I will use my uh, press. So there we go. So now it's in position, and I will just press it. And the bezel is fully in place, and the uh, and the crystal is uh, is uh, kept safe now in position. So now, I'm just putting the day just at midnight, so I can set the our hand. So you can see the hand now with the loom that I apply. I, I keep it white as as it was on original uh, original watch. So I will put the hand exactly or as close as possible to midnight. Because you want to have when you when you are at midnight every day, you want a date and a day to change around midnight. So and I will use this tool to press the hour hand in place. Perfect. So the hour hand is on. Now I can put the minute hand with the new loom as well, which is looking much nicer than uh, than the one before with the broken uh, loom in the middle. Okay, so same process, align it to midnight, just press it in place. And uh, the last uh, hand which go in the center is a chronograph uh, second hand. So I want to align it as well right at 12 o'clock because that's the start of the chronograph. So to make sure that when you reset the chronograph, it go back to, to 12. I do the same process with the minute hand. Just put it right at zero, press it in position. And last but not least, it's a hour hand. So there I did a, a bit of a mistake. Uh, normally I should have put the hour hand and minute hand first because on this design, the hour hand is just below the second hand. So I had to start a chronograph to, to put the second hand out of the way so that I can press uh, and then start the hour hand. So yeah, the hour hand will be, if you want, like have an offset of five seconds, which will not be uh, 
dramatical because yeah, it's an hour hand, so you will not see the difference. Uh, but yeah. Okay, so now it's done. I can put it back in a case which with a new crystal, a fully clean case. Just make sure it's, everything is aligned, everything is setting down flat, flat. So when it's done, I can put the winding stem with the crown. Just push the lever and just push it in place. Perfect. Just put the pushers with the springs that I order some spring online. Very important, the spring. You can see the spring there and the pusher, yeah. You can see it working. Perfect. And now I put the rings that will keep the mechanism and the pushers in place. So I put the I push the two pushers and push a ring, and the ring will keep in place the pushers as well. Perfect. Everything is looking good. The movement is beating. Now we can the last bit of the assembly will be the automatic mechanism. So I put this wheel first that will transmit the power to the mainspring. To load the to load the watch, just to make sure it falls in place correctly. There we go, perfect. Just need to use a bit of lubrication on this wheel, and this is the assembly. So I just put back the the lever on the on the plate there. I'm oiling all the points, so I'm oiling all the little jaws, the two jaws and the center. First, I will put this plate that go at the bottom of the automatic uh, device, and now I can put this bridge with the magic lever underneath. Just need to make sure everything is aligned. There we go. Perfect. Now it's just went right. Okay, just secure it with uh, like the two screws. And the last uh, last parts, which is oscillating weight from the automatic uh, device, so just put it right in the middle there. There is a shape, you see, the all a uh, strange shape, so you need to align it properly and secure it. Secure it with uh, this. Uh, that's the biggest screw that you have on a watch. There we go. So now it's kept in place, and we have a fully assembled movement. So now put back the case back with uh, lubricated and uh, put a new gasket. Screw the, the, the case back in place. Use a, use a rubber ball. And I will uh, I will finish the screw it with this uh, with this tool. So now let's put the watch on a time grapher and uh, let's see the result. Okay, you can see the amplitude is much higher. It was 170, now it's 215, so that's quite good. I would like to be around 220 on this movement, apparently. And the rate and the beat error is uh, much lower. So yeah, now I have a, a nice a nice beating uh, Psycho 6138, so I'm pretty pleased with the result on, uh, on a time grapher. Okay, so the, you can see the, the watch on, uh, on the rest there. Uh, it's looking looking nice, clean with uh, a new crystal. So that's uh, a new watch to my collection. So thanks for watching, and uh, I see you next time. Bye.